Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osuri. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, no bus fare increases as yet. Prime Minister warns on police brutality. And Law Society give views on Bill. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. There will be no increase to bus fares. That's the outcome of today's meeting between the chair of the Independent Bus Fare Review Committee and the Fiji Bus Operators Association. Committee Chair Joel Abraham says they cannot justify any increase until they have all the financial information they require from bus owners. Maggie Boyle tells us more. Before the meeting proper, both parties seemed optimistic. Our average fare will be about 15.54% that we were looking for. So we're just waiting to go in this deliberation and see what we come out with. We've called the bus, in, uh, bus industry, the place. What we want is uh, we want to find a viable solution. The closed-door meeting lasted almost two hours and the frustration was evident, but the Fiji Bus Operators Association president unimpressed. No real solution as yet. Uh, so we will now deliberate on what, what other action that uh, the association needs to take. The FBOA says it's been more than a decade since fares were increased and the cost of business for them has continued to rise. In the meantime, the, the, the industry is in real dire straits and I don't know how long it'll keep operating without any fare or income increase. The committee chair, on the other hand, says more information is needed. Changes to bus fares will affect thousands of Indian families and in light of in incomplete information, uh, we cannot justify a fair increase. We've asked the bus uh, owners to go back to finish full information and only upon receipt of full information will we proceed. Bus operators came out in their numbers today. What they wanted was agreement that they could increase bus fares. The head of the Independent Review Committee is saying that's not possible until they provide financials that will justify an increase. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Fiji is doing all it can to eliminate any chance of police brutality. This was highlighted by Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama while speaking during the inauguration of the Convention Against Torture Initiative High Level Seminar in Singatoka today. Mbaini Marama told representatives from across the region that to do this, Fiji is currently piloting the first hour procedure project. Philippe Naikaso has more. Serious measures have been taken in order to curb the issue of police brutality in the country, with the Prime Minister revealing to those present at this Convention Against Torture workshop that the first hour proceeds a project and ensures legal counsel to every suspect in custody. A review of the program has already seen a sharp decrease in the number of allegations of brutality being leveled against police officers. Moreover, uh, police stations in Fiji are starting to record interviews of arrested or detained persons, in addition to the counsel that they are already provided. The first hour procedure was initiated as a pilot program for six months in 2016, and it has already been a success with the provision of access to counsel to more than 3,000 Fijians. So despite this lack of support from the private bar, we determined to ensure that all Fijians have access to legal representation within the first hour of the arrest, a time when they are the most vulnerable. It was also stated that the police officers are using video recordings during the interview process, which protects suspects during this period. The Fiji police force is also reviewing uh, police manuals and guidelines to align themselves with international best practice and standards. Reforms in police interrogation procedures were aimed at shifting interrogations to a less confrontational nature, nature. The Legal Aid Commission has been attending to the first hour procedure when requested, and this will continue in the future. Philip and Icaso, FBC News.
Many issues were raised by the Fiji Law Society during their submission to the Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights on the Code of Conduct Bill. Society President Laurel Varasi says they need an amendment whereby the Commission must accept and investigate any complaint from an anonymous person providing there's compelling evidence or give the Commission some sort of powers. Anna Ravulo reports. An example. During their submission today, the Fiji Law Society president says the commission should be given the discretion when dealing with complaints. I mean, we are complaining. The complaint will be lodged against public official. It can be against the president, it can be against the prime minister. And any normal person who's going to lodge a complaint knows that this is not something taken lightly. And you need to be brave to be able to come and state that this public official stole this money or, you know, there was bribery involved. However, committee chair Elvig Maharaj says the commission can't have the discretion the Fiji Law Society desires. They cannot actually decide on their own discretion whether it should be going to them or not. But if they have a finding, even uh, enough evidence to actually see that the person needs to be prosecuted and there was a breach, it's a much for the commission to actually take on that particular complaint. In any event, all our, we have legislation here in Fiji that provides for the whistleblower. Why should uh, an important um, task such as this be deleted or be removed and the Commission not be given the discretion? The Fiji Law Society also reiterated that there needs to be a time frame in place when someone is lodging a complaint with the Commission responsible for the Code of Conduct Bill. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. The new Fijian passports with added security features will be available in the next four to six months, says Immigration Director Nemani Vuniwanga. Vuniwanga says the e-passports will strengthen the current passport book and decrease passenger processing at the borders. Ritika Pratap with the details. Without revealing much details on the features of the new book, Nemani Vuniwanga says they're still in the negotiation stage with suppliers in Europe. One main one is um, a chip. A chip will will uh, will be in um, will be embedded into the into the um, into the travel document, and uh, with the chip will have all the all the details. Wanimanga says the current lodging process will remain. We would we would not deviate from the, the current process. We would not frustrate the public more by having additional days. The current five days processing uh, for normal uh, pa, pa, norm, normal applications would be the ideal time. And for urgent, we'll stick with the, the current uh, uh, process. The lodging price for the new e-passports will change, but it will be decided once the book signed the country. The fee change, according to the director, is due to the added features in the book. If a passport is still valid, when e-passports come into play, um, obviously you will, you will apply for a new book, and that is for, new, uh, for an e-passport. And, and uh, there's no... There's no additional fee from, from uh, the transition from this book to the other, but it's just the normal fee for that particular book. An e-passport is a biometric passport which includes a chip which can be used at the automated e-passport gates instead of having your passport checked by a Border Force officer. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Still to come, North farmers discuss problems. And rape stats continue to alarm. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wagron and Bulafe, Nabondo and Nasir. Oya was it says, Elambasa, and the Teletan of Rome and Bulafe, Nabado and Sir. We are the Tumeli, Aquanata no Hinatoka, Teletakina of Rome and Bulafe, Nabando and Nasir. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletakanambula FM, Nabando and Sir. Bula FM, Nabado and Sir. Koro and Daku cane farmers today took to the floor to single out weaknesses in the sugar industry and how best the Ministry of Sugar and the Fiji Sugar Corporation can solve the issues. The views were raised during the consultation on the development of a national sugar industry policy currently held across the cane growing areas of Lambasa. Elamal Trangai View has more. The Fiji Sugar Corporation wants to restore the sugar industry to its glory days. 
if you look from 1997, we were at 4.2 million tons of cane. We had 70,000 hectares of sugar cane under the production. If you look till 2005, we lost 44% of our cane. As FSC gathers proposals on how to overhaul the industry, suggestions have been put forward to first identify the problems that led to the decline of the sugar industry and draw solutions from there. What was the main reason that from 4 million, it comes down to 1.5 or whatever that you are talking about? What are those reasons? Because once we tackle that reason, then we will know where to step so that we can develop. The fact is in 1997, when the lease renewal issue started, that was the main problem. Suggestions have also been put forward on how to improve yield and production. They come and take money and we give them about one to two thousand dollars to these laborers, but we have to cut cane ourselves. We give the money thinking they will come and cut the cane. So for those people, if government and stakeholders can give allowances, etc., they will come and cut cane as they know they will qualify for those allowances. First idea you have, we haven't had anybody share this idea, how to incentivize cane cutters. All the places they said, incentivize only farmers. Other proposals include improving the drainage network, reviewing the cane payment system, improving the communication between FSC and farmers, and fixing the railway system. That's something that we need to look at, is how, how we can do things more on the rail. You see the government has went with the India government to look at how we can build this rail system. That's something that we know the value will be added. The consultation moves to Senganga tomorrow and will conclude on Friday. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. The United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, commonly known as UNICEF, is calling for renewed focus on children's digital rights. UNICEF warns that over 70% of young people aged 15 to 24 years are vulnerable to dangers posed online, which includes cyberbullying and digital harassment. Ritika Pratap reports that the body is urging for concerted action to tackle this issue. The call made on Safer Internet Day comes following a recent UNICEF poll of young people who have suggested what they and their parents, teachers and policymakers can do to keep them safe. Just as the Internet provides wonderful opportunities for children and for young people to learn, there are also risks out there. Cyberbullying is a tremendous problem and we need to make sure that kids know what to do, parents know what to do and that we have ways to address this. Sheldon Yet says the issues in Fiji and throughout the Pacific are similar and UNICEF will work with the stakeholders to help provide solutions. To get the exact numbers and to work specifically with communities to address this issue. It's important now that we're aware of it and that we know there are already things that young people and parents can do to address it. Yet warns cyberbullying can cause profound harm and lead to damaging behavior among children. Kids know that they can block people who are offending them and they don't fall into classic traps. They don't get baited into the system. They don't uh, uh, retaliate and, and have a, a, a cyberbullying war. Uh, they can opt out and that's important to know. A recent analysis of sexual offences reveals that in the past three years, younger women and children are falling victim to rape and sexual assault. The most frightening aspect of the statistics is that offences committed involve girls and women with disabilities. Kritika Kumar reports. The Fiji Women's Rights Movement says after analysing data from 2016 to 2018, they discovered that there was a case in 2016 which involved a 10-year-old girl with a disability and in 2017 a case involved a woman with a disability. The age of the majority of the victim survivors is around 17 years old. And this is consistent when we compare the data from uh, the last three years. And the age of the youngest victims has uh, shifted as well, where in 2016 uh, it was uh, three years old and in 2018 is actually a six-month-old baby. Last year, the oldest victim of rape was a 71-year-old woman. The statistics that we have are very disturbing and um, this warrants um, an urgent need for all the stakeholders um, to come together and see how do we address this matter. According to the analyzed report, in majority of the cases, the victims knew their perpetrators. 
rape and um, uh, sexual assault offenses are really grave. What we find also, which is greatly disturbing, is that in a large number of the cases that have come through, the victim survivors know who their uh, you know, uh, attackers are. Meanwhile, the youngest accused last year was a 11-year-old, whereas the oldest was a 85-year-old. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. And in world news, intense rain and flash flooding continues to cause havoc in Queensland. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, he will have all the details about the latest proposal of five-a-side rugby. But Anna is here now with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Employers urge to win employee trust. And in growing Fiji, no sorry residents to get gas crematorium. Stay with us. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Jenny Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coral Coast, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. It is important for employers to build a culture of trust within the organization. Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation Chief Executive Nesbitt Hazelman made the comment in relation to the new leave provisions by government that came into effect from January this year. These provisions include family care leave, paternity leave and extended maternity leave. Savaira Tambua reports. The Employers Federation is encouraging employers to develop a culture where they can trust their employees who will be applying for the new leave entitlements. So when an employee comes and says, hey, uh, somebody is sick in my household, you can believe them, you trust them, that they're not going out to watch a rugby game or, 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 or go to Lotoka, for, for instance, and that they're honest and truthful. That's all about trust in the culture of the organization. Hazelman also says that if employees abuse the system, it will affect the work productivity. Meanwhile, Fijians have shared their views regarding the issue. Uh, if employers want their employees not to abuse their leave provisions, they should make sure that their workplace is peaceful at all times. I believe employers should not cheat. If they take their leave for the right purpose, then it's all right. But if they use it anyhow, they should be careful because one day they'll be caught. People will never abuse their leave entitlements if the environment at their workplace is good. The worker is entitled to family care leave of not less than five working days during each year of service. For paternity leave, a worker is entitled to not less than five working days, while the maternity leave increased from 84 days to 98 days. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. It's time to join Sharon, who has the latest from the money markets. The U.S. dollar mostly held steady against its major peers today. Investor focus was on President Donald Trump's State of the Union address at 200 GMT. Traders are looking forward to hearing President Trump's views on the U.S.-China trade row. And although the U.S. government shutdown has ended for now, President Trump's position on the budget will be in focus. Meanwhile, Australia's central bank opened the door to a possible rate cut if unemployment increased and inflation failed to pick up. In his speech, RBA Governor Philip Lowe noted that there were many more risks to both the global and Australian economic outlook. The bank left their official rate steady at 1.5% following its first meeting of the year. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Menaka. On to the exchange rates as said this morning, the Fijian dollar showed strength. It had gains against the Chinese dollar, US dollar, Kina, Euro and the Yen. Taking a look at the commodities market, Oil prices continuing to drop, ending at $53.72 a barrel. Gold was up today at $1,314 per ounce, and silver closed at $1,584 an ounce. In growing Fiji, thousands of Fijians living in Nosori will soon have a new guest crematorium. This has been constructed at the Rara Lewa Cemetery, a few minutes outside Nosori town. Pranita Prakash reports. The gas crematorium is being constructed to reduce carbon emission and the use of dongo or mangroves in a funeral pile-up. 
when I stole three machines here to because to cater for the funerals because sometimes there's three or four funerals uh, a day you know so it will be more easy for us to have three machines and to cater the uh, funerals construction work has already begun with the assistance of business houses we have seen that we really need this uh, in the community to get the criminal uh, made it done as, uh, as soon as the project is completed we are going to ensure that uh, upon completion of the entire building, the one the project is going to hold it up. And as soon as the thing is complete, we are going to supply and install the free air conditioning for this existing project. Project is expected to cost $900,000. The gas crematorium is expected to be complete within few months. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. And that's a wrap from the business desk for tonight. Jamie joins you now with all the very latest in sports. Thanks and good evening. Up ahead in sports. Jerry Tuwai attributes Hamilton win to crowd support. And Lombasa footballers brace for Nasinu challenge. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch FM. Mitch FM is hot. Singatoka Mitch FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mitch FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Sona Me. Nasori Jackson. Mitch FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Baba Singer Line. Mitch FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Pritika from Jackson, Nasori. I love listening to Mitch FM here in Nasori. Mitch FM is hot. Mitch FM is hot. PJ Airways men's sevens captain Kalyone Nosoko believes there shouldn't be anything stopping them from winning more tournaments on the World Series if they continue to work hard. With the Cape Town and Hamilton sevens titles already in the bag, the focus is now on the Las Vegas trophy, which they last won in 2016. Marcel Prasad reports. There is no doubt the bond in the team is strong, but Captain Kalyone Nasoko says they need to put more effort to shine in the next tournament. It's uh, the bond that uh, we share together in the team and uh, believing in each other, uh, working against it, uh, working uh, in each other and the efforts that they put in together uh, to be able to play well. And uh, yeah, uh, the thing is uh, been going well with uh, a mix of uh, older players and uh, uh, Fiji 7 side will be working on the areas which were exposed in Sydney last weekend. Uh, some of the small mistakes that we, we did uh, to cost us the game, uh, our discipline, and uh, it's one of the main things that uh, we'll work on uh, for the past uh, upcoming weeks. Former captain Jerry Tuai says fans also play a vital role in the tournaments. That's the, one of the main reasons too that uh, we put up a very good performance because of the, because of the outstanding uh, support that we receive in Hamilton and uh, thanks to them uh, before the game, even during the game and after the game, uh, they still support us. And the Fiji 7 side is pulled with Australia, Wales and Scotland for the Las Vegas tournament which will be held next month. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The Fiji Rugby Union says it will make some major announcements at its awards night in Suva on Friday. Chief Executive John O'Connor remains tight-lipped on what the big reveal is, but promises those in attendance will be the first to find out. Fiji 7 skipper Kalyone Nasoko, Jerry Tuwai and Eroni Sao have been nominated for the 2018 7th Player of the Year, while flying Fijians Leone Nakarawa, Semi Ranranra and Alivreti Vetokani have been nominated for the 15th play of the year. Mm. There will be a big announcement eh? uh, which we are keeping under wraps eh? uh, on the night. Uh, uh, the only those who will be there will be the first to witness uh, some new, uh, new announcements as part of the uh, reforms of FRU eh? and changes that uh, will be taking place uh, moving forward. Eh? World Rugby has given its approval for a new five-a-side version of the sport with an international tournament likely to be held in London this year. A UK report says the world's major rugby sevens nations, including England, Australia, Wales, Fiji and France, are potential part participants. 
Former Fiji Sevens coach and Olympic gold medalist Ben Ryan has helped develop the new format. The matches will last for 10 minutes and will be played indoors on artificial grass pitches. The new format lays emphasis on quick gameplay and does not have a half-time break or change of ends, while action resumes from the defending team's end after tries scored. The Fiji Airways Flying Fijians maintains its eighth position on the latest World Rugby Rankings released today. Argentina has climbed the position and is in ninth place, while France drops to tenth. There's a change in the top three after the first round of Six Nations. Ireland hangs on to second place and England moves up to third spot, while Wales drops to fourth. New Zealand remains the world's number one team. All Blacks players are flooding back into the Super Rugby teams this week with a number of making appearances in preseason matches this weekend. One of these stars who could make the World Cup his own later this year has re-entered training with a very clear plan. Rico Iwane is vowing to have a huge 2019. The Fiji Men's Open Touch Rugby team has started work on player strength as they draw closer to the World Cup in April. With the help of a strength and conditioning coach, the team is aiming for a better finish at this year's event. Mili Tavanga reports. Touch Rugby Fiji has never had a strength and conditioning coach before. But now it's a dawn of a new era. Things that uh, touch like we have, have never had before in the past. Uh, so we're fortunate to, to have uh, Master Fess's um, um, uh, experience on board for, for this World Cup. Um, yes, it's, it's a huge bonus. I mean, so it, it's really helping us in terms of physical preparation, um, conditioning and just getting ready to yeah, compete at uh, the elite level. Eh? The man tasked with this says, so far the players have been responding well at training. Training has picked up. Uh, we've moved into our strength phase. So uh, what we've done is we've um, gotten them strong uh, during the um, strength phase before we, uh, we do a lot of explosive and uh, plyometric stuff. Meanwhile, the players are trying to adapt to the national team's game culture. Together, we, we're trying to get to, to gel together as a unit, as a key unit. Um, obviously, we've come from different clubs, selected from dis different uh, clubs. And we're just trying to get to know each other a lot more better, uh, not just on the field, but also off the field. The men's open side finished 10th in its last outing in 2015. The 2019 World Cup will be held from the 28th of April to the 5th of May in Malaysia. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. The Lambasa football side is not taking bottom place Nasinu lightly for their Vodafone Premier League clash on Sunday. With the inclusion of top midfielders, the Mbama Singh Lions are in the process of improving its style of attack. Rasnal Prasad with the details. With a gritty 1-0 win over Rewa last weekend, Lambasa football will work on its game plan ahead of the match this weekend. If the striker gets the ball before he could touch the ball, I would like to see my midfielders are ready to receive to lay for the layoff. Coach Anand Sami says his midfield will play a key role this year. Players have to start thinking about it. It is not the practice. Is that something that you must think? Is the angle is raw? Is the player there? Can I? I mean, that's a behavior of attacking. Apart from Lambasa, the Delta Tigers hope the inclusion of Tevita Waranivalu and Bruce Hughes will leave their performance in the league. We'll uh, basically have the same thing, but uh, we'll just need to work on our finishing. Meanwhile, in a double header at ANZ Stadium on Sunday, Nasinu faces Lambasa at 1 p.m. while Suva meets Ba at 3 p.m. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Lautoka football fans will be able to witness their side in action on home soil this weekend in the OFC Champions League. Hosting the competition for the first time, Lautoka will look to capitalize on its home ground advantage. Fiji Football Association Chief Executive Mohamed Yusuf says Lautoka was one of the most consistent teams in the league last season and they hope they maintain that on home soil this weekend. Lautoka people, they've seen their team uh, last year OCL, played their full games in Auckland and qualified, went all the way to the final. This is a chance for the Lautoka people to come and support their team. They're uh, one of the most consistent teams in the country and uh, uh, good chance for the fans to come and see firsthand what Lotoka can do on his home soil. In today's play of the day, Ricky Fowler endured a roller coaster back nine before stumbling over the line to pip Brandon Grace to the Waste Management Phoenix Open title after a final round of high drama at TPC Scottsdale in USA.
That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful. Going vegan is trending in 2019. Details after the break. My name is Nan, I'm from Lumbua. As Prenny North is famous, I'm from Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2 is famous for the country. Radio Fiji 2 is famous for the country. सीमा नकाशी से मैं रेडियो पीजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो पीजी टू देश की धरकन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंगर टू कट टाउन के टैक्सी ड्राइवर देश के रग्बी फेमस है वहीं से रेडियो पीजी टू फेमस है रेडियो पीजी टू देश की धरकन In new media tonight, here's the first mobile app that enables students, faculty and staff from universities to pitch promising new business ideas directly to investors around the world. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Hope you're doing great this evening after receiving unlimited sunshine. The day was humid but it won't be for long as heavy showers are on their way and could possibly meet us in a day or two. Taking a look in the west, so pretty and gorgeous conditions after such unpredictable weather. The day was clear today, pretty fine for a jog or fishing. Eastwards from Pakhava to Siva, it was slightly cooler but sunnier throughout the day. And up north, sunny spells were quite comfortable, perfect for your holiday but let's brace ourselves for some intensive rain. At sea, southeast winds gusting 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 7.47 p.m. with low tide at 2.12 a.m. Sunrise at 5.55. For tomorrow, rain and more rain with the possibility of clearer conditions for a bit. Tomorrow's temps are mostly ranging in the low 30 degree range. And looking further on to Friday, keep your umbrellas and raincoats handy as light showers are escalating towards us. And that's all from the FPC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, is cyberbullying getting out of hand? Yes, I think it's an issue in the Okay, cyberbullying is a big issue to Fiji now. What we can do about it, we can uh, give more advice to use. Oh, I believe they should be investigated by police. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that um, uh, they should give uh, awareness on uh, some youths that are writing or posting on Facebook like that. Yes, I think it's an issue in this country and uh, you know people that are involved in the cyberbullying should be taken to task. I believe they should be questioned because what they write is not good. If they want to post on Facebook, just post the right thing. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, it's more than just a New Year's resolution or vegan wary. Recapping the main stories for tonight, no bus fare increases as yet. Prime Minister warns on police brutality and Law Society give views on Bill. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question segment this week. We're asking, should players found positive for drug intake be banned for life? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day comes from Wate Vakaloloma. This is at 5.30 a.m. at Korotongo Beach, Coral Coast in Singatoka. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, good night. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wagarong and Bula Fib, Nabondo and a Ser. Oya was it says, a lambasa, on the Teletan of Rome and Bula Fem, number two and Ser. We have a Timeli, a Kona Town of Hinatoka, Teletakina of Rome and Bula Fem, number two and a Ser. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, Kit on the Teletakanambula Fem, number two and a Ser. Bula Fem, number two and a Ser.